Yeah, welcome back. Uh, we're now joined by Mr. Victor Esse Anya, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the show, Mr. Anya. Good morning, Yongo. It's safe to say Happy New Year to you because we haven't spoken this year, right? Uh, happy New Year to you too. How do you do? I'm fine, sir. Okay, uh, well, um, we prayed and the prayers were answered as it were. The PVC extension uh, is what a lot of people had hoped for and uh, the prayers were granted. What do you think the few more days that have been added by INEC will do uh, to the 2023 general elections? Well, the extension is a good one, uh, but I still have some fears because uh, uh, very soon uh, it will be moved, uh, the collection of uh, PVC will be moved to the headquarters of the various uh, local government area. I should think that uh, INEC should uh, continue with the distribution of uh, the voters card at the world levels, because when you get to some of the world levels, they are all drug, they are all filled up with people, they are, people are struggling to get uh, the, their PVC. So if it is moved to the headquarters of the 774 local government area, it will be very difficult for all Nigerians that are willing to vote to get their PVC. That is my fear. So if I make our officials are listening to me, uh, we advise them to stick, continue with the distribution at the world level. Because if the world level, the walls are, are, are crowded, then you can imagine what will happen at the headquarters of the various local government area. It will be very difficult for voters to get their PVC at the headquarters of the local government area. That is the problem. Okay, the world level, um, in, instead of stopping uh, the collection at the world level on the 16th uh, of this month, which is just a few days away. Uh, they have now moved it to 22nd, which was supposed to be the final collection date for uh, the PVC. So they moved the collection at the world level to the 22nd of January. And now the final collection uh, will end on the 29th. So moving it back to the local government headquarters will be from 23rd of January. Is that long enough for you? It's not long enough. What I'm saying that I have been to some uh, wards, you know, like a place they call uh, Ajumo. In an uh, if a local government area of uh, I was there uh, two, the whole place was you know, and the, the, the voters uh, they find, it, find it very difficult to get their PVC. So if if they are finding it difficult to get their PVC at the world, what do you think will happen at the at the next level? And a place like uh, 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 that I just mentioned, and then to if a local government area, uh, you know, it will cost you uh, about two hours to get to that place because the roads are very, very bad, and the cost of transportation is high too. So, how many Nigerians or how many, how many uh, uh, people living in the place can afford the cost of about 3,000 to transport to that place uh, on those bad roads? So, these are the issues. So, we are finding the affected are finding it difficult to get the PVC at the world level because they are usually crowded. So if it is moved to the headquarters of the local government area, do you think it will be much easier? It will be much more difficult. That is why I say the extension is good, but it's not good enough. They should continue with the distribution at the world level. That is what I'm saying. So that it will be much easier for uh, Nigerians to be able to get their PVC because Nigerians are very anxious to vote in the forthcoming election because of the hardship, because of the insecurity, because of the hunger, because of the pain that Nigerians are going through. They don't want to continue with this suffering. So INEC should make it much easier for them, for Nigerians to be able to actualize their uh, desire to vote on uh, the next election. Okay, I quite understand with you. Where I come from as well, it's uh, a two-hour journey to the local government headquarters. And it, it will pay through the nose. I don't even want to start talking about the transport fare to the local government headquarters. So if we find this kind of places all over Nigeria, INEC, I hope you're listening. As you listen to us to do the extension, maybe till the final day of collection, you should just let it be at the what levels to ease... Uh, to make it easier for the people to collect. But, uh, Mr. Anya, I, my colleague and I are, are just concerned, are just not concerned, are just uh, anxious to know what your concerns are as we enter into 2023 
as we have entered into 2023 and getting closer and closer to the general election, if you can just mention some of your concerns uh, as we are in the early uh, days of this new year, then we'll take it from there. Let's start yes, with the presidency. One of my major concern as a citizen of this country is the issue of debt. We have so much debt uh, at, at present. At present, uh, when Nigeria is going to seven trillion naira, seventy-seven trillion naira, and such debt and loan cannot be traced to any viable infrastructure. Today we have been hearing since the formation of APC as a government since 2015 to today with just less than five months for them to exist governance is that all the money they have been borrowing all the budgets they have been making is to you know uh, rehabilitate rehabilitate uh, legacy by the express road that was built in 1978 by the uh, military administration of uh Obasajo. then the second niger bridge the abuja uh, kaduna express road so if uh, we are Borrow, we have borrowed so much. How can the government be telling us that all this quantum of money is being spent on uh, Second Niger Bridge, uh, Lagos uh, Ibadan Express Road, then Abuja Kaduna Express Road? I should think that this is worrisome because the economic government, this is aside of the uh, humongous amount of money that have been recovered from the Abasha loot. All the loot they have recovered since 2015, we have been told that such money will be spent on the Lagos Ibadan Express Road, uh, uh, Second Niger Bridge, and Abuja Kaduna uh, Express Road. So you won't begin to wonder how can 77 trillion naira be spent on just three projects? This is aside the quantum of money that is being spent that are being recovered from. Uh, Bashar Lut. So as a citizen, I'm worried. I'm worried in the sense that uh, I have children uh, and I'm going to be a part of the best people that are going to pay this loan. And when my children grow up, they will continue to pay from where I'm going to exit this world. This is very, this is very challenging. This is very concerned. I'm concerned about this. So the incoming government will find it very difficult to get its own bearing in the, in the sense that 77 trillion is about um, about a, a, a budget of this country for almost 10 years because the budget of this year now is about 20.5 20, 20, uh, trillion naira. So if we are so much indebted to this amount of money, can we, can we say with all honesty of purpose that the money was judiciously, judiciously used? Can we trace the, the infrastructure tied to this money? The answer is no. The answer is capital no. So why should the government be borrowing such money and you cannot trace infrastructure to such humongous amount of money? This is my worry. For this new year we have just entered to, this is what I'll be thinking about. Because other countries, when they borrow, you see what they use the money for. But in our own case, we don't see what the money is being spent on. The money is being spent on frivolity, the president keeps traveling up and down, up and down. In 2022, President Muhammad Buhari traveled 19 times to other countries. There is no other president in any other country that does this. It's, no, it's only Buhari. The purpose of having ambassadors is for them to represent president, their president in the countries where they, they are resident. But in the case of Nigeria, it's not so. It is Buhari that must be in every event, whether the event is viable or not, he must be there. And that is why such, uh, such amount of money is being spent on his travels. In Nigeria, since I was born, I have never, I have never seen any British prince, uh, prime minister come here. It is only the high commissioner that represents the, the, the prime minister of Britain. But in our own case, it is not so. It is Buhari that must be everywhere. Why should the, why should why should that? Why should it be so? So these are the things that are uh, that are grouping the money. So those people, if they are those in government, if they are listening to me, they should advise him that he should stay back home. He should stay back home. Some of those events that are he's going, his ambassadors, ambassadors can represent him there and give him feedback. That is what other countries do. 
the foreign affairs minister can represent him, not the president with his entourage, almost a hundred people traveling all over the world, Galavati all over the world, wasting our hard earned money. This must stop in the new year. If it doesn't stop, we all will pay for it. So this is my number one concern about this new year we have entered and about Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much. Bayo, I, I'll leave them to you. Uh, Aya, for, um, for your insight, you had said something I, I couldn't really come in at the time, but so we have an opportunity to interrogate that now, which was that, and I quote you, Nigerians are anxious to vote, and so the um, Independent National Electoral Commission should move the, uh, should keep the collection of PBCs at what level. I like the, the suggestion that it should be kept at what level. But what I want you to explain further or to, to, to in, you know, throw more light on is your statement that Nigerians are anxious to vote. And I'm asking this because there are those who will say to you that if Nigerians are really anxious to vote, why must they wait until the last minute before trying to collect their PBCs? Uh, have they been waiting to the last minute? They are not waiting to the last minute. People have been answered to get the PBC. So just like the Naira issue now, we have changed it. We have redesigned the Naira now. We are told that we are going to get it on the end. And the first thing is people knew the design Naira note. So tomorrow now, when it left, you begin to blame the citizens. It is not the fault of the citizens. If INA has started to distribute the uh, PVC for a long time ago, they, have, they, they would have gotten it. Now that the INA has started to distribute it, everywhere crowded. That's what I'm telling you. I have visited several, oh, and everywhere I've gone to, it's usually crowded. Will you blame it for the citizens? That is not the fault of the citizen, and I keep telling people Daya. that uh, Daya. Daya. almost every Nigeria has ATM, ATM card. Did Ms. they Daya. so far before Ms. they got their ATM card? The answer is no. Yeah. If private uh, infrastructure can Ms. make Daya. things much easier for the people, Ms. why is it that the government that has so much money cannot make it so easy for, for the citizen? That is the question that they supposed to answer. You that is uh, interviewing me right now, I know that when you got your TV, uh, your your uh, ATM card, you never suffered. And once your ATM card has expired, all you need to do, you don't even inform the, you don't even inform your bank before they prepare it. When you go there, you just pick it. Why is it that we must suffer for everything that government, government runs in this country? If you Ms. want to Daya, let's, let's, Mr. 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 ID card, just a moment, Mr. Is, Mr. Is only one Mr. point Mr. At, at Alausa. You have to wake as early as four Mr. Mr. when you get to that place, the place just a moment. Mr. Anya, let's, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. You are making a good point, but we are trying to interrogate what you are saying. Now, you remember that INEC extended voters' register simply because not too many people, there was still a gap in people who didn't go to register. Do you, do you understand? So there was an extension. And that extension, just wait. Just wait. Um, just wait, just wait, just wait. You will respond. Just wait. I'm trying to push um, a position. Now, there was an extension of the voters' register, and that extension is what is resulting in these additional PVCs, which now there has been this build up in the backlog. Now, we're going somewhere. You mentioned uh, 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 ATMs. And the fact that people collect ATMs without any problem. Yes, that is true. But at the same time, isn't it the obligation of us as citizens to also take this, uh, our participation in the electoral process so seriously? There are those who say we like to wait until the last minute. That does not in any way absorb INEC of anything which it is supposed to correct. I'm trying to make a point. That there's a tendency, and, and, and those who make this argument so suggest that people tend to wait for things to be coming to a close before rushing to go and either register or to collect. What can be done in terms of the psyche, in terms of our response as citizens, to correct that? That's what I'm driving at. 
that is what I'm disagree with you. That is, there's nothing like that. What, what did the INA started? The, 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 the people. Where? We just started a uh, long time ago. And we started at the headquarters. And I'm giving you an example that from Ajumon, where I have gone to cover, to if for local government area, we take you about three hours because the roads are very bad. And we are going to spend almost uh, two, three thousand to do that. Did you spend such amount of money when you, 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 you collected your, peop, your ATM card? That is the answer, the question I'm asking. So blaming Nigerians for all the failure of the part of government is not acceptable by people like us. Because we go around, we investigate, we, we, we conduct an interview. We know what is happening. So when government have failed in its own duty, do you blame it on the citizen? The answer is no. I just gave you an example of the redesign a new Naira note now, whereby the central bank said that people will get it from ATM. And I've told you that I've never seen one. I have, I keep, I have been using it. I've never seen one. So when it elapsed now, you blame it, you blame it on the citizen. No, answer me, please. Will you blame it on the citizen that uh, they didn't uh, uh, act uh, on time? If you go to bank now to go and withdraw uh, money, you still get the old uh, Naira note. So at the end, at the expiration now, people who did not get the new Naira note. You blame it on the citizen too? Please answer me. I okay. don't seem to understand. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Yeah, all me... my analysis have given example. Yes, let me... Let I gave me... you example of, a, of ATM. That you now I know that you have the multiple ATM. Did you suffer before you get the ATM? ATM cards? The answer is no. Why is it that it is government thing that we always suffer for? Okay. That must stop now because Mr. if you yeah. give excuses for government, government will continue to think that it's doing the right thing. That's what, that is the, the argument I'm trying to point out that don't give excuses for government. Government has failed in a colossal manner. We should not give excuses for government. When we give excuses for government, government will continue to think that it's doing the right thing. So there is no excuse on the part of government. Mr. The citizens yeah. are ready Mr. to collect yeah. PVC. It is the time the INEX started to distribute that they started to go to the different places to collect. Okay, we but we when understand. they get we that cost of the multiple, yeah. uh, number of people, they suffer. Right. Should they continue to suffer? The answer is no. Okay, so, Mr. Anya, thank you. Um, just finally, uh, let me just rephrase. Um, I'm not sure Bayo is trying to say that government is absorbed of this thing. But the question is, in so many cases, not just a collection of PVCs, uh, Nigerians tend to drag their feet until it is the final uh, days of that. So... We would like you to speak to the people of Nigeria. Let's, government has failed in its own way, but the people must have something they should change in their psyche in, in 2023 that we have entered now. Because we're saying 2023 is a defining year. It's a year that we hope to get things right. And if we hope to get things right, surely all the blame cannot be on the government. So what would you say to the citizens so that tomorrow we won't be finding problems, not just for PVCs, but for anything that a Nigerian citizen is supposed to do? Because whether we like it or not, our Nigerians, most of them, like fire brigade approach. So we want a word of advice from you to the people of Nigeria, how to take things, whether they are political or whether they're social, whether they're religious, whatever it is. Well, to me, I'm a citizen of this country. I am an ordinary citizen, just like those people, 30 people are condemning. I don't see any fault on the part of the ordinary Nigeria when it comes to government issue. The same, government, the same people that are being blamed for, for, for not trying to, to act on time, the same people, they patronize a private institution and they do this quickly. They do it quickly. When government have failed, they blame it on the citizen. I asked, when did the distribution start? The distribution started uh, uh, not long ago. For a country of 200 million people, you are, you are asking them to collect uh, PVC within a, a, a less than one, one month. Is that how it is done in other places? 200 million people. A, 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 a country of 200 million people. Don't you know how many countries that is? So a country is just, uh, just uh, 900,000 people. Eh? What is the population of South Tome and Pre uh, Principe? Less than 1 million, about uh, uh, 700,000 people. Uh, Gabon, what is the population of Gabon? What is the uh, population of uh, Guinea-Bissau? The, they are less than 1 million. 
but this is a country of 200 million people you want to do something you give a, a time a time length of a just a, a less than one month and you blame the people we know that whenever wherever people converge large number of people converge in a, a particular place there will be a, a, a struggle for whatever they are looking for so the citizens have no blame i keep making reference to atm card have you ever seen where any bank is struck because people want to collect the itm cards the answer is no because there is no time lag tied to it he will go there at any time you get it okay. but in the, the case of government is government that is always delaying in doing things so okay. i will not have any blame for uh, the citizen but rather the institution in nigeria like i uh, like a INEC, whenever they want to do something they should do it on time they should do it on time if issue of a registration that we are talking about now once you are 18 years old i have emphasized that one that there should be sports maybe the world uh, the world areas local government area where you work 18 years you should be able to walk into such a place to go and get your self register for 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 your pvc why must it be why must they wait until the, the period of examination of uh, election before they begin to register people okay why must they wait that is the question i'm trying to you people okay. why should i, I like always wait until right. the time of election before they allow people to register for their pvc uh, thank you, Mr. Victor. That is the question. Uh, Once somebody has clocked 18 years, he should be able to walk into the, the world to go and register for his PVC. They should not be waiting thank until the election you. period. Thank that you, is my Mr. argument yeah. with with with, with Thank you, Mr. Anya. Uh, we, so, quite, we, can't understand. we can't understand your position. And it's, a, it's the position a lot of us have, have uh, expressed, the, the concern a lot of us have expressed. Uh, we just wanted you to talk to the Nigerian people. But... Um, I hope INEC is listening because a lot of people, not just you, have said continuous voter registration means that it should not have a timeline. Anytime that anybody is ready, they can just walk into the office. If you have the opportunity to go to, if for local government, for instance, for something else, you could just stroll into INEC's office, uh, office for instance, provide everything that uh, should identify you, and then you get your PVC if you are supposed to get it. But Maybe INEC also has their own challenges and all that. They will have time to explain to us. After this 2023, I'm sure a lot of things will settle. We'd like to thank you for your perspective on the issues that we have raised here this uh, morning. Thank you so much, Mr. Anya, for coming on the show. Many thanks for the opportunity given to me. Okay. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be joined by Dr. Uba, who is a financial expert, and he will be giving us a different perspective of the 2023 budget that has been passed. Dr. Chiwuke Uba to talk on uh, the budget. But uh, we'll save him for after the news. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there are some salient issues that were raised by Mr. Victor S. A. Anya. Uh, who spoke with us about some of his concerns for this year. Bio, um, much as we tried to make Mr. Anya to, to give some blame, some portion of the blame to the citizens, he was adamant. He didn't accept any of that. He, he wasn't taking any, any of that. But he made some sense in, in whatever he was saying. No, I mean, without any doubt, I think... Um Mr. Anya successfully projected the uh, challenges, you know, inherent in collecting or attempting to collect PVCs anywhere outside of the world level. You know, given his own experience with what is happening at the world level, um, the 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 issue, of course, is, is that you have a multiplicity of things, you know, that have to do with that. Uh, including the tendency that we have. is a fact, we know that, that in Nigeria we often tend to delay before we go to fulfill certain obligations. I like the analogy he drew with the ATM card, but I respectfully will not agree with him because I know that if I do not have my ATM card, I will not have money, right? But not everybody will believe that if they don't have their voter's card, they will not have money or it will affect them. People generally, you see, there is now a renewed interest in the electoral process. And we should be happy about that. But something led to that renewed interest. Some have said it is because 
citizens probably felt that they were confronted by mainly two political parties and there was hardly anything they could do to change the situation. Okay? But suddenly you have at least four, you have two additional, for example, presidential candidates who have excited the process and the race, so to speak. And not a few people have suggested that those two additional candidates, you have Dr. Rabbi Kwakwanso, you have um, uh, Governor, former Governor Peter Obi, that these two additional candidates have somehow excited the, the, the political environment, especially Dr. Obi. It is a fact, uh, the, the Governor Obi, and this is a fact. It's, it's, there's no conjecture about it. So that inspired many other people, and especially younger people, to now go and register. And the registration was extended after it had closed. Okay, now the anxious, the anxiety, you know, of people to be part of the process should also see us taking the PPC as seriously as we take the ATM. You know, I agree that the ATM is well structured. I take nothing away from the point being made by uh, Mr. Mr. Aya. But of course, if I don't have my ATM card, I will not have money in my pocket. Yeah, you're right in that, in that once you mention the fact that if you don't have ATM, you don't have money in your, in your pocket, it also like clicks in my mind. If there's no inducement, so, so to speak, attached to anything, our Nigerian people, our people will not want to go. For instance, how about the NIN? Nobody wanted to go until it became such that if you don't have it, you can't make a call. Because they tied it to your phone lines, which maybe you have been using for business or uh, con uh, interacting with your loved ones that are far away and all that. Because they needed the phone lines, people went for NIN. And the crowd, when that pronouncement was made, was massive. But before then, everybody was like, I have nothing to lose, so I'm not mm -hmm. going. Perhaps that is how the PVC is. But I don't think, yes. I don't think it's something that we have to threaten somebody that if you don't collect, you are, you are going to miss out on this or that. Mm -hmm. uh, but how do we get the people to just find it important without necessarily having anything attached to it that maybe you cannot open an account anymore, maybe you cannot travel on the road anymore if you don't have your PVC, maybe you can't go to the market anymore. How do we do that orientation to get the people to just see it as important? It's, it's what beats I me. Think yeah, I, I think um, the, the truth is that those elected into public office must conduct themselves in ways which inspire people. Mm. You know, because part of the, the, the lack of the, what you call voter apathy or what, is always because a voter believes even if he or she votes, it's not going to change anything. And so you have that tendency not to take it seriously. And like we said before, people that believed with two political parties, their choices are restricted. With four possible presidential candidates, they feel gets more excited. And so people shed a lot more interest. So I think this is a good thing. But those elected into public office must conduct themselves and public affairs in such a way as to inspire confidence in the population. And once that happens, people will respond normally. People will respond, you know, uh, this is what I feel. Yeah. Well, the government should do something really drastically about these things. Um, I remember that in the 80s, only the, the simple advert, Andrew, if you remember, <laughs> made a lot of people to realize that it is a collective responsibility to stay home and build Nigeria. That was, it shows us that Jakba didn't start today. The Jakba syndrome didn't start today. People were running away from the country just to go abroad and, you know, have a better life. But the national orientation or whoever was responsible was able to do that using just that advertisement. So people, the consciousness of people grew. And mm -hmm. most recently, we were not known as Niger. But maybe it started in music and so on. And somebody took it up and made people proud that they are Niger and then said, good people, great nation. It spoke to the consciousness of the people. So things like that matter. So I think the, the National Orientation Agency and any other agency that is supposed to uh, talk to the psyche of the people should sit up and do something. Because, yeah. And then the 
Ministry of Education should do something as, as well to make sure that children from the very, from the cradle, if possible, will start to learn how to be patriotic, how to be responsible citizens, how to take up uh, the mantle of leadership, if need be, how to, how to be self-reliant and all that. These things are, are not there in our schools anymore. The other day we were talking about things we miss from the curriculum, and I said, I miss manual labor that taught us how to take responsibility, taught us how to sweep our rooms, dress our beds, because what you do in school, when you come home, you won't see it as, a, as suffering. You see it as you know, something that you need to do. It's for your own good and all that. But nowadays, these things are not there anymore. Maybe the government should, do a, should have a rethink. Even though they are benefiting from this, but what about posterity? Why don't we think about legacies? And I've always said, a man who never thinks about legacy is a dangerous person. Bio, a final you word. Said it you said it all. Yeah, just one, one <clears throat> other point. Mr. Ayer made a very good point, and it's something we've discussed several on the program, which is that we should stop this whole idea of having a fixed period for people to register for elections. When you turn 18 years old, walk into the National Population Commission office or INEC office, register and collect your PVC. All INEC should be doing is determining those, the cutoff point for those who will vote in the next election. But they cannot stop people from, there should be no stoppage period for people registering to participate in it. It must be continuous. And that's a very good point Mr. Ayan made. And I think we need to keep happening on this so that the next amendment of electoral law can factor that in. There's also the question of uh, voters in the diaspora, Nigerians in the diaspora voting in elections. That's also something that should be considered. But maybe when the next run up to the elections that will come after 2023, we'll start talking about that. We will start right after this election. So we cannot stop talking about it because four years is not, it's too much to, to go and wait uh, before you start doing something that you need to do. But we'll take a break here and take the news. And when we return, we conclude with uh, the economic expert that uh, we've, we've uh, had on standby that will be talking, giving us a different perspective of the budget and any other thing we need to discuss uh, for the run-up to wrap up today. Stay with us. <laughs> 